In Season 18, Bungie is going to be bringing a raid from Destiny 1 into Destiny 2, like they did last year with Vault of Glass. While it would be very strange to not bring back King's Fall, given the circumstances of the latest expansion, we don't know what it is yet. But after being asked about it a few times, I thought it would be fun to go over the remaining raids and give them a vibe check. What needs to happen to update them for Destiny 2? To get a better idea of what Bungie might be looking for when it comes to updating the old raids, we should start with Vault of Glass. Vault of Glass's original release in 2014 was one of the saving graces of the entire franchise at the time, but as far as today's standards go, is pretty tame. It was updated a little in 2017, but 2021 is when it got whipped into shape a lot more. Bungie's goal was to preserve the feeling of Vault of Glass, not really change too many things up, but bring it up to today's standards by putting some spins on how the mechanics are performed. The door opening was almost completely unchanged, but I don't think anything dramatic needed to happen here. We still have plate mechanics in the game, and I don't think it's out of pocket to have this sequence remain mostly the same. The conflux stage of Vault was easily the most boring part of the raid, where all we had were waves of enemies coming at us. Pretty much it. This basically didn't change in D2, save for occasionally spawning in much more threatening targets that, if sacrificed, would wipe you instantly. The cleansing mechanic also stayed mostly the same, but I don't think this needed a big adjustment. But, there's not really a ton you can do to an encounter where the entire mechanic is stop enemies from going to the thing. Remember, we're trying to keep the raid as close to the D1 version as possible. Sure, you can add in a new mechanic, but that goes against the goal. People want to feel like they're playing the same thing that they did in 2014. This very first encounter's updated design is what really set the initial bar for this video and what extremes I think Bungie will go to in order to preserve the raids as they were in D1. Even this encounter, where the entire fight is just killing stuff out of doorways before they hit a certain point, didn't receive a substantial update. They could have done anything here, but they didn't. Which means when we think about future raids and future encounters, we need to keep this in mind. The Oracle Encounter is where things got shaken up a little bit, where you now need to kill the Oracles in a specific pattern. This differs from the original, where the Oracles spawned in the exact same spot every single round, and you just needed to kill them as fast as possible, with the order not mattering at all. In almost eight years of playing raids, we've progressed as a community in understanding raid mechanics, and this would have been far too simple. The Templar encounters also more or less the same, although with the teleport locations being completely random, and the detain mechanic now targeting someone every so often, instead of just a group of people right as you break Templar's shield. I wasn't anticipating much of a shift here, and the detain mechanic getting its slight adjustment was likely because of how high-powered we are. In D1, it was a bit more of a struggle to get through these shields, but in D2, it's very simple. So tagging people randomly during the damage phase keeps people on their toes a little bit more versus being able to just blast through it when a damage phase starts. The pre-Atheon phase got some of the most significant changes in the entire raid, but managed to keep the experience of going into portals to retrieve the relics intact. In Destiny 1, all you had to do was blitz into the portal, kill the Hydra, yoink the shield, and that was it. This fight was maybe a couple of minutes. Whereas now, you need people to actually swap places back and forth and sustain the fight for a bit longer. It doesn't feel like it drags too long. The fight usually ends around the time people start asking, Are we done yet? Is this done? Atheon is also basically intact, but opted to use the transfer of information mechanic we've seen so much of in Destiny 2. In Destiny 1, Oracles simply spawn in a fixed order, and you just need to kill them all to get out. Now, one team must tell the other team which Oracles to kill, if it's very much in line with raid mechanics we've experienced for the past couple of years. So, as you can see, Bungie kept these encounters pretty intact, and these are the parameters that they are likely going to keep when updating these other raids. So let's keep that in mind going forward. The core of the encounter and the core of the raid must remain intact. Let's take a look at Crota's End first. Crota's End frequently gets memed on as essentially being a six-man dungeon because of how easy it was. I personally would like to see Bungie revamp this to really kick our ass, 
versus making it into a dungeon like many others have been requesting. It's totally within reason to make it a dungeon if Bungie wanted to do that, but I think they'd rather keep it a raid because it's more fun as a raid, even if it could technically work as a dungeon. But if it was a dungeon, there would be some work that would be needed. I'm going to apologize right now to people who didn't play D1 or don't really know the raids. I'm going to give you like a one or two sentence description of the encounter. And that is to keep this video a little bit briefer than it would have been. Check my old guides if you really want to know how the encounters work. The opening Thrallway, aka the Lamp Encounter, whatever you want to call it, I think is actually totally fine. And I would be very surprised if we saw significant adjustments here. The main concept of this encounter is using the lamps to get rid of stacks of a debuff that slow you as you navigate a maze, which isn't really a maze, it's just like a path. It's the thing in Lightblade, that swampy section. Except it's a whole lot darker. I don't think they're going to adjust the physical space of Crota's End at all, really. They didn't do it for VOG. I don't really anticipate them doing it for any of the raids. I could see them making this encounter shorter by maybe adding some ramps or cutting out lamps and having the debuff maybe tick slower or something, but that's really about it, and that's even if they decide to shorten it, which I don't see them doing. I do see Bungie adding many more threatening enemies to this encounter during the run, though. In D1, it was 99% Thrall, which was fine for D1. In D2, I suspect we would see a few more high health knights to deal with because of how much more powerful we are. The plate at the end will also likely be made to be a bit more intense thanks to having Well in addition to Ward of Dawn, especially when you combine Armor of Light with Well's regenerating health. I doubt we would see something like having our supers suppressed for that specific sequence, but I think it's on the table as something like Ward of Dawn trivialized the finale. Now, the bridge encounter, on the other hand, is one of the most flawed raid encounters in the history of Destiny raiding. The original version of the encounter was able to be abused in almost every way imaginable, with the 2017 version getting some tweaks to the rules. The original version could be abused by simply having one person do the entire encounter by crossing the bridge with their sword and then having everybody else die. This worked because the game's condition for success was having everyone who is currently alive being on the other side of the bridge. The game would see that everyone who is capable of crossing the bridge has crossed it, the one person, and that remaining player could simply solo the final part of it, letting people just be carried through this encounter without having to learn anything at all. The other five players being dead meant that they couldn't cross the bridge because they were dead, and they could not be revived because the bridge would disappear with no way of reasonably rebuilding it. Also, if you want to know why self-res is never coming back to the game, the ability to cheese this encounter with self-res is one of very many reasons why. In 2017, with Age of Triumph, the rules were changed so that five gatekeepers had to be killed to progress. But one of the biggest problems with this was that it basically assumed you were going to have almost everyone alive all the time. If you had people die on the wrong side of the map, or at the wrong time to the point where you couldn't kill five gatekeepers, the fight would softlock and you would have to manually jump off the bridge. This wasn't a glitch on the game's end, it was literally designed in this way, but there was no wipe mechanic to kill everyone if you didn't succeed. You literally just had to do it yourself. On hard mode, where there's no revives, this meant that if you had two people die during the first half of the fight, you had to manually start over. Or, if they died in the second half of the fight while waiting to cross the bridge. That felt even worse. This isn't the worst thing ever. It's just very unnatural and could create moments where you couldn't succeed anymore, but the game wouldn't tell you that you couldn't succeed, and also wouldn't end the fight for you. It's just kind of weird. This is where I think one of the toughest challenges awaits for Bungie when it comes to an update, and I'm not sure I have too many ideas. The main mechanics of the fight are having someone build the bridge while people stand on annihilator totems to make sure you don't explode, killing a sword bearer to get a sword so that you can actually cross the bridge because you need a sword to cross the bridge, and then killing the gatekeepers at the other side to progress the fight. We want to keep these intact as much as possible without running into the flaws of the previous version. I could see something where players go as a group back and forth across the bridge to kill gatekeepers, where when the bridge is formed, it stays formed for a set amount of time before being reset. You could keep the annihilator totems around as well. 
But I do really like the splitting up part of the fight and having to slowly trickle from one side to the other. I think that is potentially a core enough experience that Bungie wouldn't want to get rid of it. And it plays into the theme of the sort of action hero feeling that Bungie was going for in this raid. Everyone gets to have their little moment. But if they need to remove this to make the fight work smoother, I would be okay with that. The Ear Ute fight is another one of these pre-final boss super short encounters that we had during this era of D1. And this is another fight that I could see getting changed up. The fight in Destiny 1 was literally just kill stuff and then kill a couple more things and then kill another thing after that and then you killed the boss. The challenge was a bit more intense, but it was still kill stuff, but, you know, fast. And this is where I think Bungie has the most room to kind of do whatever they want since there are no mechanics at all. They could follow the trend of what they did for Vault where they put a bit more meat into the encounter or they just keep it as is. But the door is wide open here. I definitely would prefer them turn this into some sort of gauntlet style encounter like the third Vow encounter. But the play space is very open and non-linear. So besides locking people into rooms until you kill stuff, I don't really know how well that would work. This area is not a big play space at all, and without a theme to go on, like the VOG portal encounter where you need to actually do something, this could very well just stay the same as it was in D1. Finally, we have Crota, which is a very one-dimensional fight. One person does the main thing, and five others more or less sit on the sidelines, launching a rocket or two to bring down Crota's shield, while the one person goes up and whacks him with the sword. The thing is though, I don't expect this to change that much, and I'll explain. We've seen Crota a couple of times in D2, and there haven't been any dramatic changes to how this mechanic has worked when we've seen Crota, but they were both outside of a raid environment, so I don't really know how much we can use those as examples. I still think the core of shooting his shield off will be a thing, but how we end up doing it, or how tanky the shield is might change, but that all depends on if Bungie even wants to change this fight in the first place. I remember a while ago, Bungie said that they wanted Crota's End to feel different to Vault of Glass, much more action-oriented. I think they said action movie, something like that. And this mechanic was simply a way to change things up back then. Nowadays, we very rarely have encounters that rely solely on one person to do the bulk of the work, making Crota's End much more of a novelty. We also haven't had any final bosses in Destiny 2, where the main source of damage is dealt by a relic weapon, so there aren't any comparisons to make. I think if Bungie were to shake this fight up, it would be with regards to the things that we do outside of the boss damage phase. The Crota fight is definitely very nostalgic to a lot of people, and I think shifting from the formula that was used might bum people out. People know this as a sort of meme encounter, although I don't think Bungie would continue to make it a meme encounter just to keep it nostalgic. I just also think that there is very little wiggle room because of how much of a novelty the main mechanic is. They could add whatever they want to the other parts of the fight, you know, maybe having to kill knights and then the knights give you a buff so that you can actually damage the sword bearer, or something along those lines. But hitting Crota with a sword is too nostalgic and it's too core to the encounter to remove. Let's move to King's Fall, one of Destiny's more demanding raids. The opening encounter dunking all of the balls into the statues is pretty fun, but I think this could be easily chopped down to four balls instead of six. This can run a little bit long. I expect the platforming sections to stick around as well with basically no changes. If they wanted to shorten things up, I guess it would be okay, but I don't think they will other than the fact that they would rather spend their development time in another section of the raid that really needs it. And this is a pretty iconic, if not frustrating, section for some people. With regards to the totem encounter, mechanically, I don't think there's too much that's wrong with it, and the combat isn't the worst either, especially with enemies ramping up in difficulty the later it gets in the fight. Part of me wants to say shorten the fight, as it runs pretty long, but because it slowly ramps up in difficulty and it's not just the same throughout, I guess I'm kind of okay with it. It's actually very punishing messing up the mechanic here, as I don't think the average group is able to recover very consistently. So that part I like, but it does feel like it can run a smidge long. Otherwise, this is a pretty tightly tuned encounter already, and most of the stress of this encounter came towards the end, where you had much more threatening enemies spawning in, and you were starting to run low on ammo and all that kind of stuff. 
They need to make sure this experience is replicated in some way, but given how much stronger we are in D2 comparatively, I think it's going to be a little tough. On day one, it'll probably be all right, but after that, I'm not as sure. The War Priest, I could see getting some tweaks to make it a bit more exciting. In D1, this fight was kill some adds, step on three plates in a certain order, and then just nuke the boss. One person during the damage phase had a mechanic to deal with, and they were the ones actually controlling how long you got to deal damage, which was kind of neat. It meant that the more adept you were at holding the buff, the longer your team could deal damage. The mechanic was the person who stood on the last plate of the sequence got a buff that had five charges and it lasted 10 seconds per charge. Killing an enemy removes a charge and it resets the timer. They had an aura around them and you had to be in the aura to deal damage to the war priest. I could see this getting tweaked so that the buff actually ping pongs to a new person every time an enemy is killed. It would move more towards this current philosophy where everyone needs to know how to deal with mechanics, even if part of the mechanic itself isn't really that exciting. It's just kill one enemy before the timer runs out. Something that I thought was really underutilized because of how quickly the boss died was the whole gaining powers mechanic. Each time you did a damage phase, the War Priest would banish one of the three pillars you hid behind to not die after a damage phase and would gain some additional powers based on the one that he banished. Or maybe it was just a set sequence that I went in, I honestly can't remember. You just never really had to deal with the consequences of this mechanic, to a significant degree anyway, because this guy fell over in two damage phases. I'd really like to see some emphasis on this part of the encounter in some way. I think the boss steadily gaining powers over time is pretty cool, having to deal with more and more stuff as the fight goes on. But I think one of the only ways you can consistently have people deal with this mechanic is by gating the War Priest's health. Historically, I'm not a huge fan of health gates, but for something like this fight where I'd want the fight to move a bit faster, I think it would be okay. Caretaker is a fight with health gates, but it's a short enough fight that I don't really mind it, and if your damage is really good and your timing is just right, you can get through it in two damage phases. So let's speed up this fight a little bit. Now instead of 50 seconds maximum to deal damage, maybe now it's only 25, and then the timer to kill an ad is only 5 seconds, and it's ping-ponging back and forth, and people need to react super fast, and now the boss is gaining powers. I think making this fight a bit more fast-paced could do some good for it, because in its D1 state, it's a little dull in terms of the pacing. 25 and 5 might be a little too fast, though. It'd probably be like 10 seconds for three people, 30 seconds total. All of this keeps the core of the fight alive while giving it some more excitement and lets a fun boss thing actually play out instead of it just being completely ignored because you nuke the boss. Most of the fight otherwise is just spawn killing stuff out of doors. So we need something to spice it up or we need something to spice up the section where we just kill stuff out of doors waiting for the thing to happen. Golgoroth, my sweet, sweet Golgi. Golgoroth is one of two encounters that I believe needs little to no adjustments, except for one small, tiny, insignificant, completely encounter ruining thing. How do we stop the one orb strat? For those who don't know, Golgoroth is a complex encounter with many moving parts. Two people had to taunt Golgoroth back and forth by shooting him in the back of the head, while the remaining four players had to bounce back and forth shooting his crit and standing in specific areas in order to actually deal damage. There's a bit more going on than that, but that's the one sentence version. In the D1 version, every pool gave the same amount of bonus damage when you stood in it, which meant you could just knock down an orb to spawn a damage pool, deal damage for 15 seconds, get out, rinse, repeat which completely ignored the taunt mechanic in the fight, which should have been the main way to deal with Golgoroth. And because you were able to deal so much damage in that first pool, all it took was two or three dips, and you were done, turning this graceful ballet into me trying to perform a graceful ballet in real life. What I propose is getting rewarded the longer you're able to stay in Golgoroth's pit where the damage pools are. So, your first orb, damage starts pretty low, then you move to the next orb, now the damage is going up, hitting higher and higher stacks, and by the time you hit the final orb, you're now at supreme omega power. This does present an issue, though, in that you would want to save your ammo for the final two or three pools to maximize your damage. So what would you be doing with your time during the other pools? 
that's a good question that I don't really have an answer to other than just like primary damage. You wouldn't want to just stand around just to build stacks to deal damage later. That's it's kind of lame. Not really a whole lot going on there. And we can't just entirely design the fight around something like Whisper of the Worm where you can regenerate a bunch of ammo because anyone who doesn't use that weapon would be in trouble. You can't design fights specifically for one gun, even if that gun would be the obvious choice. That's just not a good idea. We could introduce a punishment anytime you lose the attention of Golgroth, and if you lose his attention too many times, you wipe. This would hypothetically prevent people from just one orbing the fight, but if the boss is able to be brought down in two or three orbs anyway, this would need to be too punishing of a mechanic and therefore potentially not very fun. We could link it to the pillar or totem of ruin. Totem? I think it's totem. For every orb that isn't used in a taunt phase, the totem would light up. In King's Fall normal mode, this totem was a thing. There were six lights on this totem. Anytime somebody died, one light would turn on. If you hit six lights on, it's an instant wipe. So you could increase the number of lights to this thing to like, I don't know, 10, 12. So this way, if you try to one orbit two times and you failed, you would wipe. But what's stopping people from just smashing down all of the orbs and just doing the one orb strat anyway? You would need a way to detect that the pools have been used so now you'd need to link the pools to giving people some sort of buff that can quantify how much of a pool has been absorbed and then translate the unused part into the totem of ruin punishment. It, like, in theory, I guess it, like, it works, but it just sounds super messy and it's really weird to explain. I don't really like it. You could stop people from knocking the damage orbs all down at the same time a little bit by locking the order in which they are able to be knocked down. But that doesn't really solve the problem that much, and it also restricts other teams from knocking down the orbs in the order that they want to. There's another flaw in this as well. You want to reward using as many of the orbs as possible to deal damage, or you want to punish people for not using all of them. What about the people who just go halfway and then bail? It's like, yeah, we solved the one orb problem, now it's just the two orb problem. Unless we combined both the reward for going the distance and the punishment for not. It's, you know, it's, it's a tough problem to solve. But I do think Bungie will try to do something to get people to do the entire damage phase. And if they don't, I will be very sad about it. Like, really sad. Daughters of Oryx. Yet again, another very fast two-minute encounter, but this one is actually a little important as it served to teach people about the plate mechanics for the next fight. With such a short duration and such specific mechanics in the fight, I don't see this getting changed up in any significant way. Oryx. Oryx is tough. You need to do things in a very specific order, and if you don't, you die. That's basically it. Which doesn't leave much wiggle room to change this fight. What I like about this fight is also what I don't like about this fight. This fight is very difficult every single time. There are almost no ways of speeding it up. You need to do four rounds of this fight at a minimum every single time. There's no cheesing damage. There's no abusing mechanics. Nothing. You just got to play well every single time. Six years ago, I was okay with this. But my philosophies on raiding have changed a little bit since then. A fight that does not allow you to speed things up at all means you need to play well every single time, which isn't terrible, but it also means that it can feel like you're never actually getting better at the fight, which is important to a lot of players. This is why I was hesitant to suggest a health gate for Warpriest, but in the way that I'm envisioning the fight in my mind, the encounter wouldn't feel very long and thus the health gate wouldn't feel that terrible. Oryx is another encounter where you don't deal damage to the boss. You explode bombs, and the bombs deal the damage. Four bombs did 25% of his health, which meant you need 16 bombs to kill the boss. There were four bombs per wave, which means you need a minimum of four waves to kill the boss. If you mess something up, that's another rotation you needed to add. Messing up even one bomb meant you need another full rotation. But... The bombs were also a core part of the encounter. A lot of things felt core to the encounter because the encounter had a very specific dance you needed to perform in order to win. 
I could see a world where bombs weaken Oryx, and you're allowed to deal damage to Oryx after they get stunned. Back in the D1 days, you needed all the power ammo you could get to deal with the ogres that spawned during the fight, which spawned said bombs in the first place, which meant that you had very little ammo to actually use on Oryx. Nowadays, ammo is plentiful, along with reserves, and our damage output is through the roof, meaning we could actually have some ammo to deal damage to Oryx in this phase. This could be tuned however Bungie wants. More bombs exploded means a greater damage buff, etc., etc. I don't know if I'd want Oryx to be one-phased or anything like that, as a major part of this encounter is an endurance check, being able to survive a long time. But in D1 normal mode... This wasn't a huge deal, it was mainly the hard mode that was the problem, with revive tokens were probably somewhere in the middle. Either way, I think Oryx has too many moving parts for Bungie to deviate in a significant way from the main path. That's not to say that things aren't open to interpretation. You could have the plate runner be random every time like the daughters encounter, you could change some enemy spawns, but I think this ends up staying pretty true to the original. Actually, the plate runner being different every single time, that's probably going to be like a challenge or something. Finally, we have Wrath of the Machine, which I think is mostly fine overall, with no big changes needed in any particular section. The opening encounter, where you open the door, I could see being made a bit shorter. It can run a little bit long. Kind of bummed that the whole mechanic of collecting light and stuff never really goes anywhere after this, but, you know, oh well. Otherwise, you know, it's a door opening encounter. Not too much going on here. So, Vosik for real. Personally, I thought a lot of the difficulty from this fight was combat-oriented. It wasn't hard to do the mechanics in this fight. You pick up a ball, you throw it at his face, and you shoot a monitor every minute or so. What made it hard was the sheer amount of enemies spawning in and the damage that they could throw at you. In D1, this was a lot of stuff, especially on hard mode. A death in hard mode would really mess you up. In D2, however, this would be nothing. The, the, what was spawning in would be nothing, which means all of the other mechanics are much less perilous, save for the wipe mechanic. I could see a situation where multiple monitors are popping up now, like around the entire room. I could see a transfer of information mechanic where someone needs to tell someone which monitor to shoot based on the symbol that's on a specific monitor, and you need to match that to another monitor, something like that. I think the whole throwing balls mechanic will stay the same, in order to remove the shield, but I think it'll be six orbs like it was on hard mode instead of three on normal mode because of how much stronger we are as a whole and because of Bungie's ideas of wanting everyone to be involved. I do not see the damage phase getting changed up very much. Vosik is still just kind of shooting at you, and I think the whole find the safe room thing is also pretty fine. They might conceal the information a little bit more than D1, but I also think the amount of time that they gave you in D1 was pretty well balanced. There's enough stuff going on in this fight that it always feels like there's something to do, but the main struggle here will be figuring out if this is going to turn into a mechanic-based fight or if they're going to try to keep it more combat-oriented. If it's going to stay combat-oriented, they're going to need to beef up enemies a bit, either in health or in numbers, probably in health because we can just annihilate everything, in order to keep that same level of intensity and stress like it was in D1. The Death Zamboni, as it is not officially called, is too iconic of an encounter to see any dramatic changes, if any at all. Also, I don't know what else you really do to this encounter to begin with. Where do you really need to change anything? It's pretty short already, not that it really needs to be increased in duration. If they tune this encounter to be as scary as it could be in D1, then I don't think we need any changes at all. It was scary in D1 because of all the random burst damage from the spider tanks and the dropships coming in and all the captains and stuff like that. I know people aren't really fans of being killed instantaneously, but it did keep things pretty tense. Same for all the enemies that were spawning in, both minor and major. Whatever Bungie needs to do to keep this as frantic as it was in D1, do that, and I don't think much else needs to be said here. The pre-axis fight is a nice way to introduce the main mechanic in the actual fight, but this whole shank phase thing in between the rounds, what what was going on here? Bungie, wh who who made this? What was what was the thought process with the whole minute-long shank thing? Why was this part so long? Cut this down, cut it like completely, change it up. Do something, because this part was... 
just so boring. Just get get us to the good part. This doesn't need to be here anymore. Besides that, I don't really have any gripes with the pre-access encounter, and that will also transfer into access itself, which I believe is one of the best encounters in Destiny 1. It's probably the best encounter because of Golgoroth's main flaw. Golgoroth is my favorite, but I think Axis is truly the best. Not only that, but it has one of the best challenge modes in Destiny history, having you do an extra mechanic that is not normally needed during the non-challenge version of the fight, the supercharge mechanic. Everyone needs to know everything that is going on in this fight. The only part that I didn't like was the whole Axis teleporting around the arena at the start of each phase situation. I think we could shorten that up a lot because it doesn't add anything to the encounter in my opinion. Otherwise, it is a fast-paced, high-action, very mechanic-focused encounter with a little bit of combat, which people seem to prefer. Everyone has a job. Then you move to the damage phase, which is also very fast-paced, needing split-second decision-making, and you get to have a fun damage phase at the very end if you manage to do all three stunts. Also, there's no cheesing this encounter, as far as I'm aware. Please don't tell me if there is, because I don't want to know. I don't want anything to really change about this fight at all. I don't think anything needs to change about this fight at all. It is one of the best, if not the best, in all of Destiny 1. I know you're all waiting to drop those opinions in the comments. Let me see what you're vibing regarding D1 raids coming to D2 over the next couple of years. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.